Another new category for Drive Car of the Year 2023 is the best electric vehicle under $70,000. Now this is a hugely exciting part of the market for a lot of buyers because this is not only uh, the car that may form a lot of Australians' first experience with an electric vehicle, but it may be their first purchase of an electric vehicle. Our contenders this year are the updated MG ZS EV that's had a few tweaks for 2023. We've also got the Nissan Leaf. It has been in market for a while, but it too has been mildly refreshed for the year. But then we have a newcomer, both in name and in badge, the BYD Atto 3. These cars are all priced at the affordable end of the scale. Which one has what it takes to take the win? Let's find out. Drive Car of the Year is our annual culmination of testing hundreds of cars throughout the year. We select the best vehicles in each category based on our testing during the year and then get them together again to assess them in even more detail. Our editorially independent testing went over these cars inside and out, on the road and in test conditions to see what they're like in an emergency situation. For electric cars under $70,000, our judges assess them not just as electric cars, including some from emerging Chinese brands, but how they handle the daily grind and stand up to the same scrutiny as petrol powered cars from established manufacturers. Looking at our finalists for the best electric car under $70,000, I'm joined by Glenn, who's our senior judge here today. Glenn O, MG ZS EV to kick things off. This is a car that's familiar to a lot of Australian buyers because it is and has been the most affordable entry point to electric car ownership. Absolutely, mate. In fact, MG has a real value strength when it comes to this category. Seven year warranty, also something you should not sniff at, but it's cramped inside. It also has some dynamic compromises and some ergonomic issues that the judges have found over the testing. Hmm. The MG ZS EV is one of Australia's top selling electric cars in this price range. It's able to limbo below $50,000 drive away because it's based on an older petrol powered model rather than a clean sheet electric car platform. While this enabled the MG to be among the first movers in the affordable electric car race, it's now starting to show its age in present company. Judges praise the MG for its familiar and straightforward cabin controls relative comfort and space for this size of car, supple ride over bumps, and its class leading seven year warranty. However, the judges noted the MG's steering was heavy, especially during our emergency swerve tests, there's no reach adjustment for the steering wheel, and driving range is not as good as the benchmarks in this price range. In isolation, the MG feels perky, but against its newer or updated rivals, it was in fact a touch slower than the rest of the pack. These cars are of course not about straight line speed, but our 0 to 100 test times illustrate their performance credentials. The updated Nissan Leaf Long Range was the quickest of this trio, doing the 0 to 100 dash in 7.5 seconds, ahead of the BYD Atto 3 in 7.7 .7 and the MG in 8.1. The MG redeemed itself with the best emergency braking performance from 100 km an hour, a highly respectable 37.2 meters versus 38.5 for the Nissan and a below average 39.1 for the BYD. Well, second cab off the rank, Leno, the Nissan Leaf. It's been in market for a while. It's now available in two battery levels. Got a lot to like, but how's this one performed over the testing? This was actually the dynamic surprise of this category. It is a properly quick car to drive through the slalom and the emergency swerve. Fundamentally though, it is really starting to date. The world is leaving this car behind. I mean, it has the shortest range of our three competitors. It's also the most expensive. And those two issues really make it hard to love. The Nissan Leaf has been refreshed to help it take the fight to newer competition. The first generation Nissan Leaf arrived locally in 2012 and the second generation, which is effectively an update of the original from a decade ago, has been in Australian showrooms since 2019. The most recent round of upgrades have been worthwhile. The judges noted the Nissan Leaf E Plus has perky performance, impressive handling and grip and the bigger battery pack delivers longer driving range than before. While its official name is the Nissan Leaf E Plus, in automotive shorthand, it's called the Nissan Leaf Long Range. Though to be fair, the judges noted the extra driving range has merely put it on par with the competition rather than deliver genuinely long range. The maximum claim for the standard Nissan Leaf is listed at a modest 270 kilometers, although closer to 200 and 220 in the real world, while the Nissan Leaf Plus is rated at 385 kilometers, 
or closer to 320 to 350 kilometres in our real-world testing. These estimates compare to the BYD Atto 3 extended range model claim of 420 kilometres, which was closer to 350 to 400 kilometres in our real-world testing. Judges praised the Nissan LEAF for its sharp and responsive driving dynamics and for having the zippiest acceleration among this trio. The cabin is cosy and comfortable, and the controls are familiar as most are shared with Nissan's petrol car range. The artificial spaceship sound when reversing, inside and outside the car, is a nice touch and aids pedestrian safety. Downsides, for all its merit, the judges noted the Nissan LEAF is starting to feel old. As with the MG, it's based on a petrol car platform that has been electrified rather than a ground-up design, and that compromises cabin space and battery capacity. In the end, price weighed heavily against the Nissan LEAF Plus. It's a car worthy of consideration, but be prepared to drive a bargain. In our opinion, it's a $50,000 to $55,000 car, but it has a $67,000 drive-away price tag. Well, Glenno, new car, who dis? This is the BYD Atto 3. Brand new badge, brand new name, brand new everything. This one's been a bit of a surprise contender. Absolutely, mate. Funny name, funky interior. Yeah. The designers have had a red hot go inside. A lot of it is unconventional, but it works and it adds so much character to the car. I mean, fundamentally, this car is actually good to drive too, and that's kind of the key with EVs, right? But a couple of catches that people need to be aware about. The warranty, there are some hidden bites in the warranty. Different parts of the car are warranted for different amounts of time. Dynamically too, some of the active safety systems just have a couple of areas where they need refining. The BYD Atto 3 comes from one of China's biggest vehicle manufacturers and is new to Australia. BYD cars are sold here via a distributor which is still finding its feet and navigating its way through local vehicle regulations, which has led to some delivery delays and frustration among customers. The car itself happens to be the newest electric vehicle in the sub $70,000 segment and is based on an all new dedicated platform. The MG ZS EV, also from China, and the Nissan LEAF, manufactured in the UK, are starting to show their age and feel old in the company of the BYD Atto 3. Judges noted the BYD is a smooth and easy car to drive and has a comfortable and roomy cabin. As this test was conducted, it was priced about $50,000 drive away, making it one of the most affordable electric vehicles in Australia at the time. Although the exterior styling is futuristic, Judges were divided on cabin appearance. We reckon good design should also be about practicality. The BYD interior looks futuristic, but the judges noted it is also roomier and more user-friendly than other electric cars in this price range. Of course, no car is perfect. Judges were critical of the lane keeping assistance system, which needs better calibration. The BYD's tyres have extremely low grip, by class standards, not performance car standards, as evidenced by its poor performance in our braking and emergency swerve tests. The digital speed display is small and the instrument cluster needs a sensor to better match ambient light. And cruise control only works in five kilometer an hour increments. In this price range, the BYD Atto 3 has all the ingredients to continue to be a strong contender, providing the company keeps making improvements. Well, an exciting category with three exciting finalists, but there can be only one winner. So for 2023, the Drive Car of the Year Best Electric Vehicle under $70,000 is the BYD Atto 3. While not perfect, the BYD Atto 3 was deemed a worthy winner among its peers. When the judges' scores came in, it clearly ranked ahead of the MG ZS EV and the Nissan LEAF Plus. The Nissan LEAF was praised for its performance and grip and would have been a chance at winning this class if only it were $15,000 to $20,000 cheaper. The MG had price on its side, but it's starting to show its age. In the end, the BYD Atto 3 topped the scoreboard. Most judges had the same caveats. The lane keeping and driver assistance technology needs more work, the tyres need more grip, and the infotainment screen and instrument cluster also have room for improvement. But the BYD was, on balance, the vehicle judges voted for in this price range of electric cars. It's a worthy winner of this category given its price, comfort, roominess and performance and it shone against the older competition. BYD Build Your Dreams, funny name, funky interior. They've really had a go inside with the design and while it all might be a bit offbeat, it all works really well. 
as a car, the BYD Addo 3 also drives really well, and you get a good range for the price. In fact, as a first step into electric vehicles, you can't go wrong choosing the BYD. Now we see a lot of car interiors here at Drive, and I tell you what, we've never seen anything like this. The BYD Addo 3 interior has gone wild and then crazy on top of that. You've got so many funky elements here that make it interesting and fun. From the crazy door handles to the guitar string uh, map pockets on the side, You've got blues, creams, you've got wavy metallic things, you've got really weird rings for the air vents, you've got Maverick's kind of Top Gun shifter here to put it into drive. Everywhere you look, there is something interesting about the BYD and it's what makes this car so, I guess, entertaining and likeable just because it's different. And if you want to see something really cool, check this out. You've got a landscape screen here, press the button, the screen rotates to show you your information in portrait style. Next level. Now you may have thought a small EV with guitar strings for door pockets might be small in the back, but check this out. I have got plenty of room back here. I've got tow room under the seat. I've got great knee room. I've even got reasonable headroom and the car has a standard panoramic sunroof. Here you've got more crazy vents. You've got USB ports. You've got a center armrest with cup holders. The seat itself is comfortable and the material is soft and supple. It's actually a really, really nice place to spend time. So considering that this car has an entry price that makes it one of the cheapest EVs on the market, it really is worth a look at if you're looking for an electric city runabout. Boot size on the Addo 3 is actually pretty good too. You've got 440 litres like this that expands to over 1300 litres when you fold it down. Plus it's got a nifty false floor, meaning that you can fit larger items in here without having to, to mess around too much and fold the seats. Under the storage there, you've got space for cables. You've got netted compartments here to stop things from rolling around. So in general, it's a pretty well practical layout for a beginner EV and certainly for a city car. To see what it's like on the road, let's put Glenn behind the wheel. Now, while well, Wardy's told you all about how fun and funky this interior is, it would all count for nothing if the BYD wasn't a decent car to drive on the road at least decent if not excellent and let me tell you it's not excellent but it is a real surprise package on the road as well it is really comfortable it is effortless to drive it handles Australia's often crap road surfaces much better than I would have thought now when it comes to powertrain the BYD has got a 150 kilowatt motor with a battery pack that's good for over 400 kilometers of range and it's got plenty of poke too so that's a tick in its area but when we took it onto the dynamic testing, the emergency lane change and the slalom, a couple of deficiencies started to come through. The suspension, which was very good on the road and very comfortable on the road, started to fall apart a little. Now, I don't want that to sound harsh because this car didn't fall into a screaming heap. It still got through the slalom and it still did the lane change okay. But dynamically, it has a few shortcomings that you need to be aware of. Look, I suppose it's not a sports car, it's not trying to be, it's just trying to be a commuter car. So if you approach it in that regard, you won't be disappointed. So when you sum up the BYD Addo 3, it is probably one of the biggest surprise packages of Drive Car of the Year 2023. I mean, it's got a really fun and funky interior. It's really good value for money. It's a great first step into electric vehicle ownership for a lot of people, and it's affordable. It's good to drive. Dynamically, as I said, it's got a couple of shortcomings, and there's also some question marks around warranty. It's a six-year vehicle warranty, but there are a whole bunch of sub-warranties that you need to be aware of, like this touchscreen is only two years warranted. So if they can get that right, and if they can actually improve the dynamics of touch, there'd be nothing holding this car back. But as it is, as an overall package, the judges were impressed enough to name the BYD Addo 3 Drive Car of the Year 2023 Best EV under $70,000. Head on over to drive.com.au to read the full review on the electric cars under $70,000 and check out the rest of our Drive Car of the Year category winners for 2023.